The OYT or one year term insurance rider. So this is a rider that can be attached to a whole life insurance policy, carries a ton of benefits, which we're gonna go through as far as opening flexibility, maximizing cash value. However, to provide all the details and full disclosure on it, we're going to go through quite a bit here. This will tell you everything you need to know to help you with your decision-making process to see if I wanna attach this rider or go a different direction. So the one-year term rider, a lot of times this is blended with a PUA rider uh, with insurance companies as well. What it is, is one-year renewable term insurance. So it's a term rider. Often we will use it when planning for high cash value life insurance policies to raise the death benefit at a very cheap or cost efficient manner, which raises my MEC limit and allows me to pay more money into PUAEs. So how the rider itself works, how it is priced, is that it is a, in its name, a one year term insurance rider. Every year, as I grow older, the cost of that rider increases. It increases with age. Now, you see current and guaranteed up here. So what that means is when I buy a policy and have this term rider attached, the company has their current expenses or charges for the term component. However, they do have a guaranteed charge. And really what that means is if they want to raise the cost, they can do that. Does it happen? Not that often, but they can do it. And I want to be aware of it as a consumer. Flexibility. This, in my opinion, is the main reason to add this rider to any life insurance policy. It allows me to add a ton of money into PUAs per year without underwriting if the policy is set up right and the company allows it, but I can really add money in PUAs on top of my base premium, a lot of flexibility, optimize the cash value right off the bat. It allows me to increase the limits. So what that means when I say increase limits is if I look at a policy without a one-year term rider, they may allow me, for example, to pay 3x the base premium into PUAs per year. This is without a one-year term rider. So if I have a $10,000 base premium, I can add up to an additional 30K in PUAs per year. If I have a one-year term insurance rider attached, now they will allow me with that same 10K base premium to pay up to $100,000 per year into PUAs. Every company's different. They have different limitations and such. We wanna be aware of that. However, generally speaking, you will see that this particular rider opens the window room. It allows me to add more money into PUAs. So I wanna look at the costs compared to the ability to pour more money into cash value and which one nets me more money. That's really what I'm interested in. But in respect to those limits, really what you'll see happen is it allows me to lower the base premium, lower the commitment, lower the initial hit that's gonna chew up all my cash value and get more money in cash value. How it works. So in this example, let's say I've got a net death benefit of a million dollars. That's your net death benefit, one million. How this rider specifically works, and this is gonna tie into the costs here, the net costs, because it is true that the rates for these products increase over time. But using this example, if I have a net death benefit of a million dollars, let's say I have a whole life death benefit of 100K and my term insurance rider is $900,000. When you add money, into PUAs, into a life insurance policy. Yes, it grows your cash value, but what do they do in respect to your whole life death benefit? It goes up. If I add money into the PUA component, it buys me what's called paid up additional whole life insurance. It, it's permanent, it's paid up. Where I'm going with this is as that goes up, guess what happens to the term rider? it goes down. <laughs> so yes, the rate may increase, but it increases often on a lower amount of term insurance. Net death benefits the same million. My net cost on the term component will often go down. We're gonna look at an example here quickly as well. Two examples actually. So when it's constructed, whole life goes up, term goes down, kind of like a seesaw, keeping my net death benefit the same till I'm all whole life. So transparency is critical in respect to the rate increase, current and guaranteed rates, and then also how the net net costs function because your 
whole life amount goes up, term rider goes down. Here's the bottom line in my mind. Does it give me more cash value or less cash value? Based off the present dividend rate, the present interest rate environment, in the guaranteed interest rate environment. If things go south, if I'm focusing on guarantees, because if I wanna look at just the guarantees of that term cost, well then it's also fair to look at the pure guaranteed cash value, let's make it even worse. Guaranteed term cost, no dividends, guaranteed cash value interest rate, look at it with a policy with this term rider compared to one with half the term rider. This way we can see the difference there. So let's take a look, this will be interesting actually. So what we've got here first is a 40-year-old male. On the left, you see a policy that allows a maximum 1090 split ratio. So this company, 40-year-old male here, $5,000 base premium, total annual outlay of 50K per year. If we try and put more than 10X the base premium as far as a total payment, I get a big red warning message <laughs> that says this will not be a proof for sale because it exceeds 10X the base premium. So here's what I'm interested in now. So this is based off of the present dividend values and current term rider costs. Okay, so what do I got? 50K a year going in, net cash value, this is where everyone ends up looking at the end of the day. Hey, how do I maximize the cash value of a life insurance policy? Breaking even between four and five. But year five, I've paid in 250. I've got 253. Hey, that's great. Term rider cost. Here we go. Right off the bat, $447. One year renewable term. Now, what I will add with this term rider is we have the option as a policyholder to chop it off or partially reduce it every year, typically beginning year seven. Here, we did not do that. I deliberately left it on to let the costs increase because I wanna see a comparison. So there's my eight rate increase over time. Now we're kinda of playing both, both sides here. So as we're paying money into the whole life policy, as we're adding money into PUAs, growing the cash value, term riders gradually decreasing over time as well. And this also helps me not to, not to trigger a mech at any point in time. But I keep it on there, fund up until age 65 what the individual wanted to see. And by age 65, I've got $2,210,000 in cash value. Okay, that's great. <laughs> on the right, we have a policy that is a 40-60 split which was just about as aggressive as we could go without a term rider attached to the policy. So that means of the 50,000, 20,000 went toward the base premium, the other 30 went to PUAs, no term rider attached, a bit more straightforward. Now, we go into this in more detail in our MEC study video, but this one actually MEC in year 21 based off of the current midpoint and guaranteed values. It has to do with the death benefit not increasing fast enough. But again, that's on another video. What I want to touch on here is even though it's a mech, it doesn't make a difference, never catches up to this guy. So the main question is with going without a term rider, I will be forced to carry a higher base premium because the mech limit has a direct relationship to the total death benefit. Whether I get that death benefit pushed up through a term rider or, or base premium, those are the two components at the end of the day, the primary components, that's what's going to move it up. So here, I've got 32,000, I paid in 50, 32 right off the bat in cash value. Break even point, right around year eight. I've paid in 400, I've got 404. Compared to the 1090, big difference there. 44 right off the bat and breaking even between four and five. Now, based off of dividends, the dividend payout is more favorable to base premium dollars over the life of a policy, based off of the dividend. Base premium dollars are more sensitive to dividends, so as dividends go up and down, that's gonna have an impact. But here we'll assume the dividend rate never changes, changes, Tell me if you ever see the 4060 overtake the 1090. 
with the increasing costs. Now, this column actually is the cash value difference. So at age 80, you've got about 52 grand more in the 1090 and you had more money from start to finish. Pretty straightforward. It's like, okay, why would I go with this option under any circumstances? It just does not give me more money. I can fund each of these longer as well. Now, an argument we might hear is, well, Steve, you're still looking at the current expenses. Let's look at the guarantees. Let's look at the guarantees. Exact same policy now. Identical, same insurance company, all that good stuff. Break even points longer, because we're just looking at the flat guarantees. Year 10 with 1090. Year 14 with the 4060. Term cost, big difference. Look at the guaranteed, now the cost by age 65 is 9,800, almost 10 grand compared to the 2,000, I think it was 2,200 on the current expenses. Huge difference, almost 5X more. So that's often where we'll see agents trying to scare people out of this as an excuse to sell a higher base premium. Now, <laughs> some agents don't know, if the agent doesn't know, then it's, it's a different story. But why I state it like that, where I see guys try and scare them out, hey, look at these costs go up, plus all the fees and everything. This includes all the fees that are included in the riders, the PUAs. What do I have more money in? 4060s, 1538, 1090s, 1575. Here you go, the same column again. Gives you the cash value difference. Let's look at age 80, about $54,000 more with charging the maximum allowable amount of money that we can charge for that term insurance rider and only crediting the guaranteed rate. Getting more money into PUAs gets you out of the gates faster, gives you more money from start to finish, which gives you more money to work with. That's the name of the game. That's what we're looking at here. Now let's look at an example a bit older with a different insurance company. So what we've got here is a 50 year old male, same thing, minimizing the premium on the left, on my left, <laughs> 40, 60 on the right, minimizing the premium without the need for a term rider. That's the key. Okay, what do you notice here? Break even point, firstly, 1090, got 100, 20, 40, just about year four. I paid a 140, I've got 139. Here, <laughs> this is the dividend values. 100, 20, 40, 60, 80, 2, 40, 20, 40, 60, 80, year 11. Okay, big difference in the break even. Now, with that said, no term cost. Term cost here. Seven years only. The purpose of this example, we have the term cost per unit. You will see that that increases and spikes quite a bit once one hits 65, actually. That's when the rates really start going up. But with that said, look at this. Let's chop it off after year seven. Depends on our funding circumstances. If we're still funding a heavier amount, we want to make sure a MEC doesn't occur. That's something we want to be considerate of. But at the same time, this is optional. I don't have to declare this when I first start a policy. I can elect to cut it or not. The interesting piece is you can partially reduce it too. I might say, well, you know, I might want to keep some of it on for death benefit planning. So let's just reduce the term down to 500K and then peel off 25K a year. You can do that kind of stuff. You got that flexibility. That's what our office specializes in. But point is we funded for 20 years up until age 70 in this case, with term rider, without term rider. Did the term cost become too expensive? Let's look at the guaranteed costs. You see them jump quite a bit. Not shooting up nearly as much as the other example. Here's why. 
This one was designed purely as you dump money into PUA. So you've got 50 grand going in here, 5,000 went towards the premium, 730 bucks went towards the P, towards the term cost, everything else, that'd be about what, 44,300 went into the PUA component, which pops in the cash value, also grows your whole life death benefit. Remember the seesaw effect? Whole life goes up, term goes down, keeping you level at the same death benefit. Well, look what's happening. Yes, the unit per term insurance is increasing, but, and this is based off the guarantee, so we're at worst case scenario here. You can go back to the other one if you'd like, but it's not going up that much because you're buying down the term by adding money into your cash value because it buys you more whole life naturally. Then we chop it off, which you've got the option to do, there you go. So we're at the same point in time, age 80, $94,000 more by age 80. Not to mention you had more money from start to finish by using that term rider. I know it's so interesting if you wanna go back to the example and if somebody says, well, what if you forget to cut it? Well, you can look at the same thing here. Here we kept the term rider. Still more money start to finish. Current dividend values, now guarantee values, keeping the term rider, cutting it after year 20. Even when I try to give the OYT a clear disadvantage by doing something that I never do, keeping the term rider on that long, it still comes out on top. Based off the guarantees, no dividends, charging the maximum amount, no mech occurs, nothing like that, and we've got more money. So this is the kind of stuff I want to be aware of when I'm looking into a policy. So going back to the whiteboard presentation, bottom line, which one gives me more cash value? Which one gives me more flexibility? Which one puts me in a better position to use the money, grow the money quicker? From a consumer standpoint, a term rider typically does that. Is it the case every single time? Maybe not. I mean, I am a believer in showing all the options so we can see the pros and cons, but in many cases, yes. Now, what I'll add here from the agent's perspective, different story. If I've got more cash value up front, guess what that means? Less compensation up front. If I've got less cash value up front, meaning I took a higher base premium, or compensation. So that's the kind of stuff I want to look at. Not to say the agent is poorly motivated. Some are, but not all of them are. But be aware of that, right? Okay, does it make sense? Which one gives me more cash value at the end of the day? I mean, ideally, if you could buy a policy without talking to an agent, meaning you saw all the options, everything transparent up front, okay, now I know exactly which one to pick. I mean, that's that's uh, how we want to show you everything. But anyway, before I go on rambling forever, I hope this helps. Reach out with any questions, and we will talk to you soon. Hey guys, Steve Parisi here. If you enjoyed the content you just saw, please subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell for future videos. If you'd like more information or to see some custom policies for yourself, feel free to call or email our offices at the contact information below.